The Christian life is about putting off and putting on because of the truth that we being in Christ are dead to certain things like the law and sin and the world and we're alive to Jesus Christ who is our righteousness. Upon deeper study of the meaning of these terms as they are used in the scriptures, we will see that putting off can also be described as laying down or setting aside or even fleeing or forsaking something. And putting on can also be described as clothing yourself or receiving, appropriating, being renewed, abiding, obeying the truth, looking to, or laying hold of something. We both put on and put off by faith in Christ Jesus. And we're going to see in this study that what putting off and putting on comes down to is a matter of flesh versus, versus spirit, carnal versus spiritual, self versus Christ, old versus new, condemnation and death versus life and peace. And it's important to remember that actually doing this is all just a matter of faith, which is reckoning what God says is true to be true even if we can't necessarily see it manifest right now the way we'd like it to be. And understanding this major theme in the New Testament epistles, I'm hoping will help you to see the bigger picture so you don't get bogged down like we all naturally tend to do by the admonitions in there that can seem to be putting demands on you that can cause you to feel overwhelmed and discouraged. The reason that we can feel that way is because we easily fall back into reading scripture by the letter rather than the spirit. And a necessary tool in overcoming that tendency is to read everything in the larger context of the gospel taught in scripture. Or I've heard many people say, always read scripture with your grace goggles on and I've also heard it explained as reading the Bible with your armor on in other words be rooted in Christ standing on the solid foundation of the gospel that he laid when he laid down his life for us and resurrected have your helmet of salvation your belt of truth and your shield of faith on this is all about your identity in Christ. That's what the armor is. You are in Christ. You have nothing to fear. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. This hope that we have in Christ serves as an anchor for our soul. It keeps us sober-minded and solid, holds us steady in place so that we're not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine that can come even sometimes from our own Bible reading. If we, if we get bogged, so bogged down and distracted by details that are taken out of context and hyper-focus on them, we could start to have an anxiety attack. <laughs> so, um, we, we also need to remember that faith is, is reckoning. We just need to get that in our heads. We, God has presented these truths, and we reckon them as true, okay? Our flesh, which is our old man in Adam, that's how the Bible describes it, okay? Was already judged and crucified at the cross with Christ. And he is meant to stay there. Some people are arguing that we're no longer dead and crucified because we are risen with Christ and we're an entirely new creation. Well, the problem with that is not only are they denying clear scriptural truth, but they don't have any idea what their flesh is, what God thinks of it, and how we're to deal with it based on how he dealt with it in his wisdom and righteousness. And they're leaning on their own understanding in that, essentially. And God is not putting demands on the old man, which is also called the flesh. 
You can't improve it and clean it up and make it acceptable before God. You just can't. The part of you that was raised to new life in Christ is your spirit, which is one, one in spirit with the Lord. You're made alive in him, and he is your life. Christ in you, the hope of glory, right? That was a mystery revealed through Paul. But we need to remember that the good works, righteousness, and holiness are Christ and will originate from him by faith. Faith is like the, the avenue by which Christ is manifest in us. It is, it is literally Christ himself being made manifest in our mortal bodies, according to the scriptures. Paul said, For I, through the law, am dead to the law that I might live unto God. And notice this is present tense. He is dead to the law that he might live unto God. What does it mean to through the law be dead to the law? It means Paul agreed with the law and its work to condemn him as a sinner with as a sinner. And his being considered judged as guilty and crucified with Christ, that is, is the solution, okay? Our life now being risen with Christ, we live unto God and not the law, the spirit and not the letter. Paul goes on to say, I am crucified with Christ. See, it's present tense again. I am crucified with Christ, present tense. Nevertheless, I live present tense, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So the part of us that is crucified is meant to be held or reckoned in the place of death, and the part that is risen and reckoned alive is Christ in us as our life, and we are joined to him as one spirit. So, if we aren't supposed to clean up our old man and serve God with it, how are we supposed to walk worthy of our calling in a matter pleasing to God? It's simple, by faith, by reckoning. <clears throat> the Bible says that we mortify, which means to, keep, to, to uh, kill or keep in the place of death, our members here on the earth, by the Spirit. We do this by the Spirit. And living and walking by the Spirit is minding the things of the Spirit, we learn in the book of Romans. We cannot, by the letter, which is demands on us to be and to do, live and walk in the Spirit. We can't, by the letter, live and walk in the Spirit. The letter kills, but the Spirit gives life, remember. The two are contradictory. So if you're reading the Bible and seeing demands on you to be or to do apart from Christ's finished work, you are reading it by the letter, okay? The reason the letter kills is because it condemns you. It shows you that you fall short. You trying to do things pleasing to God and be pleasing to God apart from who you already are in Christ because of his finished work will get you nowhere. If you want the life and peace of Christ promised in the scriptures, you need to lay hold of it by faith in the gospel. And so let's get started by reading some of the scriptures that refer to putting off and putting along, on, sorry, and along with the admonitions they contain. And by doing this, guys, I'm hoping we can put into practice reading with our armor on, wearing our grace goggles as born again, dearly loved and cherished children of God that we are. James 1 21, wherefore lay apart, okay, the lay apart there is the same word uh, in the Greek to put off, okay, put off, lay aside, leave behind, forsake, abandon. So wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive, receive would be like putting on, okay? Receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Hold on a second, guys. Okay, there it is. 
So we're laying aside. So we are laying aside is not being in keeping with what is true of us in Christ. Filthiness which in the Greek is just pollution and defilement and filthiness. Oh, oh, and superfluity of naughtiness, which in the Greek is abounding of wickedness. Okay. And instead we're receiving with meekness, the engrafted word. And I love this term, the engrafted word that really caught my intention in attention. Did I say intention or attention? Never mind. Engrafted in the Greek speaks of something being implanted, brought into living union with something else, and established there, which enables something to develop and grow. The Strong's Concordance used the example of a successfully grafted shoot. And of course, that reminds me of the vine and the branches. how we have been grafted into Christ, who is the vine and we are the branches. I also thought of the babe in the womb and how it's connected and nourished there so that he or she can develop and grow and be healthy, you know, like through the umbilical cord. So receiving with meekness the engrafted word is abiding in Christ by keeping the gospel in mind. You know, First John tells us that keeping the gospel in mind, which you heard in the beginning, is how you abide. To receive something with meekness is to receive it with humility, choosing to agree with God rather than leaning on our own understanding. And we can continue to receive the word with meekness as we grow in grace in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ through his word. He is a continual supply of nourishment and life to us. Okay, let's go to Hebrews 12 here. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside, there it is again, every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto, the looking unto here is like the putting on, Jesus the author and finisher of, our, finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Okay, so here we're encouraged to lay aside or put off every weight. And the sin which easily besets us. And this is speaking of things that weigh us down. And it's speaking of running a race with patience. Um, have you guys ever seen people adding weight to their run on purpose by wearing like a weighted vest? Or sometimes I see them just using like a heavy, a loaded backpack. Uh, we know that they, they do that to make the workout harder, much harder and more challenging. But you know what? They're going to tire out a lot more quickly too. And Jesus said his yoke is easy and his burden is light. So any heavy burdens are ones he doesn't require us to carry on this race. He did that part for us, guys. This This is a long distance run. It's not a sprint. Or a feat of strength like the strong man competitions. The Christian life is a long distance run. And if we're going to run it, we need to do it with patience. And without extra burdens that we put on ourselves unnecessarily, they can weigh us down, wear us out, tire us out, right? Make us feel overwhelmed. And the word beset here, when it talks about sin that so easily besets us, it means easily entangling or encircling like a net. It reminds me of a net around your feet and you trying to run. It, it's distracting and it hampers you from continuing forward. And here it tells us the, the way to continue forward is to keep our eyes on Jesus, to look to, to Christ Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. 
He is the joy set before us. We are co-heirs with him. We can endure the hardships of this life when we keep our eyes on him and who we are and what we have in him. We're never alone. He's running with us. <coughs> Sorry, guys. When I think in terms of a race and Jesus being the author and finisher of our faith that set us on this race, in the first place, that means he's there at the start, the finish line, and every step in between. He'll never leave or forsake us. He knows we can do nothing apart from him, and he wouldn't ask us to. Somebody's car alarm is going off. I don't know if you can hear that. I had a dream one time that Jesus was walking with me with his arm wrapped around my shoulder, holding me closely to his side. And I was looking at him. I was like staring at him at his profile. And he was looking straight ahead. He was very focused straight ahead as we were walking forward. And I felt so safe and so secure, guys. And I knew that he knew what he was doing and he knew where he was going, you know. And that I was going to get there safely too because he, he just held me close with his arm around me and that's how he has us guys all of us um so let's go to romans 13 the night is far spent the day is at hand let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light so the putting off is the casting off, okay? And the putting on is putting on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and in being, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. There's another put on, right? And make not provision for the flesh, to fulfill the lust thereof. There's another putting off, not making provision for, is a type of putting off, right? So, that's what I mean by there's a lot of different terms used with the same essential meaning, meaning of put off and put on. And it all works the same way. So, so here again, this is about remembering who we are in Christ we have been transferred out of the darkness into the light. And Paul always reminded the church, the children of God and the church, of who they were in Christ. He would appeal to their identity. If they were doing these types of things, they need to, needed to remember that those things don't define them or make them any less who they are in Christ. In fact, those things are really not in keeping at all with who they actually are. So keep that old man and his deeds nailed to the cross where he belongs and live Christ by faith. Let him be manifest in you. Let his fruit of the spirit be manifest in you as you keep walking forward with him, eyes on him. We are changed from glory to glory as we behold him. You know, beholding is looking to, looking at. Okay, so this will be the end of part one. <clears throat> I've got allergies. I don't know if I can talk much longer. But I do have a lot more to bring here. And, but I don't, I really don't want these to run too long and wear you guys out anyway. So I will come back with part two, either tomorrow or early next week, Lord willing. All right. I love you guys. Have a great evening.